It's 5.30. Before I call the meeting to order, I'd like to remind everyone to please sign the register that's outside the, the door. Uh, you need to print your name and also sign it. Uh, that becomes part of our minutes. So if you didn't sign it coming in, please sign upon leaving. So with that, I'll call the meeting to order. And if we could all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First item on the agenda is the adoption of the agenda. Uh, commissioners, have you had a chance to review? Do you have any additions, attractions? I, I guess I've had a chance to review it, and I would like for us to, um, I would like some more information on item C and on item E. Item C? C. And which one? Um, e, as in Edward. Okay, so you'd like to remove item C and E, and I'd like to remove item D and F from the consent agenda also. <laughs> so that makes it simple on what's going to remain. Yes. So if there uh, are no other modifications, then I would entertain a motion to adopt the agenda. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, at the next item is presentations, and at this time I'd like to turn uh, that portion of our agenda over to Chief Harrison. Good evening. Uh, excited to be here tonight and get to introduce you guys again to Officer Hillary Cook. Hillary, if you come up. On October 25th of 2018, Hillary was dispatched to a house fire with a disabled person inside. And when she arrived, she found a garage full of smoke and fire coming out of the house into the garage and saw the victim uh, laying on the ground, went into the garage. Uh, this victim, this particular victim is, has some mobility issues. So uh, some of the witnesses that were there spoke to me and have known this person a long time and said without Hillary's intervention, she, she likely would not have survived the fire. So I think it's very fortunate that, that Hillary has the courage that she has and that she was there quickly enough to make a difference and save a life. And so for that, we're presenting her with a life-saving award tonight. And so uh, I have a letter and an award that I'd like to present to you, and I really appreciate your courage and uh, everything that you do on our department. H Hillary hasn't been with us full-time a year. Mm -hmm. So about a year, and I believe this is the second time that she's de uh, demonstrated exceptional courage under tremendous stress and, and threat to her own safety in our community. So I'm, I'm really impressed with her, and I'm very uh, pleased to have the opportunity to serve with her and officers like her that are just, it's humbling to serve with people like that that are willing to put themselves in harm's way for our community. Should we go? Yeah, absolutely. So we'll step back. Barbara. Come down a little bit. I'm also very excited to uh, present this plaque to an individual that has uh, worked at the zoo now since he was 12 years old. This is Nathan Carter. He's the son of uh, Rob and Melissa Carter. And um, when he first started, he was 12, and I actually had him look up to me. But now you can <laughs> tell that now I have to look up to him. Um, 
He has grown into a fine young adult, and uh, we appreciate his time. He worked mostly Saturdays, and so I'm going to have Katie. Uh, Katie works side by side with him, so I'm going to have her, have her uh, give a little bit of talk on, on Nathan's experience at the zoo. Like Barb said, um, Nathan's here for his 500-hour award. Um, He's an outstanding young man, courteous, polite. He has always been a joy to work with. He's, as his time there has shown, he's confident in himself and very calming, which is both important, working with the animals and the people. Um, he's built that trust with not only the keepers, but the zoo animals, and the zoo animals actually treat him like he was a keeper full time. Some of the things he's done while there um, is coming at the beginning, every Saturday for about four hours, since getting in high school and you know how they get busy and a job, he's started coming for about two hours. Um, he's always communicated when he can't come, when he can come. He's even changed his day to a Sunday to be able to help us out. Um, some of the tasks he's done, as you see up there, that's him helping. We had just sheared and brushed Jenny. He has certain areas of the zoo um, like feeding the tortoises, which don't actually take our direct supervision. So we will get him set up there, and then we can go do something and know that he can get it done, and we just go back to make sure everything's set when he's done. He's also come in for the Zulaween and park opening. His family's helped with that on different days. Um, he's come in to help with sp school tours during the spring. Um, if we've had too many, he's learned how to do that and can actually lead a group of uh, sometimes kindergartners to sixth grade kids all on his own with parents um, and so we've enjoyed his time. Uh, we wish him, he's going to graduate soon and go off to college so we wish him the best and hope he'll come back and visit but we are, we just get excited for when he can come and enjoy his time with us. Um, so. We wanted to give you a special thank you just overall for that and an award for, he's actually gotten 512 hours up to now and it's still growing. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to present it. Next item on the agenda is uh, consent agenda. So do I have a motion? I move we uh, approve items A and B of the consent agenda. You have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Motion and second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Items for commission action. Um, we'll look at item C from the consent agenda. Consider a resolution exempting the city from GAP, the general accepted accounting principles requirements. Okay, yes, uh, my questions were, I read through that, and that doesn't in any way, um, uh, I'm trying to get the right word, uh, transpose on, on what our requirements are through the state as far as, as far as timeline for when uh, information has to be like quarterly reports and all that. It's something separate from what we're doing now. Yes, this applies to the audit. Okay. Uh, and is this, it looks like this is something that we've, uh, we've gone through the motion every year uh, and come to this point to where we've agreed and uh, make a motion to that we weren't going to follow these particular accounting principles? Correct. Um, what it is is uh, cities our size in Kansas can exempt out of having um, following GAP procedures okay. uh, when presenting your financial statements. And um, 
those are typically reserved for the larger cities, Wichita, Kansas City, Overland Park, those types of cities. Um, what that is is if you are keeping full books, like all your assets and a dollar amount for them, all the infrastructure, um, that putting a dollar amount on those, and then depreciating those. Okay. Uh, it's basically what we're exempting out of. Okay. And being able to show our books as under Kansas regulatory basis, which is cash basis. Okay. So it was just some other requirements that uh, due to the, the size of the community, we, we didn't have to follow Correct. in the beginning. So Correct. we're just going to opt out of that uh, completely. Yep. Okay. Okay, that's kind of what I thought when I read that through, but I, w I had a couple of questions about yep. that I wanted to ask. All right. Thank you, Dan. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Yeah. With that, then I'll entertain a motion. I move that we approve a resolution exempting the city from GAP requirements. A motion to have a second. Second. All in favor <laughs> signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Item D, consider a request from Montgomery County Commissioner Larry McManus for the police department to release bicycles for a donation project. Uh, this seems about like the third or fourth request. Um, and I just wondered if maybe we could look at an application period that we do it all at once, you know, where a organization nonprofit organization that is looking to receive some bikes they could submit in a request and then at one time you could filter the request by based on number of bicycles or even with these is it possible to use it as a PR for the police with uh, younger teens or or kids that you'd have an event at the park and let them put in a name and have you know another bucket that has uh, a number of a particular bicycle so you draw a name and draw a bike that way you know during you could have hot dogs you know have the police cars do some with the fire EMS some public relations so kind of improve the the dialogue between the the citizens and then also distribute some bikes to to the <coughs> public and then, you know, we could do it in one effort instead of, you know, it's kind of trickling in to one, hey, let's do this. And it, it occupies a lot of your time and, and then, you know, takes up commission time. But, you know, it could be a tool looking at some of the remarks at how many bikes accumulate and the burden that maybe we could reach out and, and do... Uh, some PR for the departments. Yeah, we've we get so many of them that I would like to just maybe even entertain just building a sculpture randomly somewhere just to get it out of our. <laughs> we do. We get a tremendous volume of them, and so we are. Um, I, I think it's a great idea. Anytime we have an opportunity to build on our relationship with the community, of course, I want to seize on it, mm -hmm. and I can, I can uh, kick it around with with staff and see what other police departments are doing with found property like that, but. You know, really the biggest issue is space and right. anything that we can do. And, and I realize they do trickle in. We give six away here, six away there. But, you know, that adds up over, and I know it takes time. Um, so. Uh, and even if you had uh, two selections for distributing the bikes to uh, organizations a year, you know, just something that you could do it all at once, then it would free up your time instead of going down four times. You have a drawing in the spring or a drawing in the fall for, for these applications or request bikes. Then, you know, you're, you're dealing with one distribution instead of four. And we, and we can take a look at it. I think my biggest thing is, is uh, you know, one of the things when we talk about what is community-oriented policing, and and one of the one of the <clears throat> underwriting um, principles of it is uh, increasing exposure and improving uh, interaction and speeding it along. And so, 
the only counter that I would have to that is is uh, I don't want to make it. I, I don't mind to do the work because it serves the officers that have to handle them. It serves them well. They appreciate it. Um, I don't want to do anything that throws up a roadblock to people's mm -hmm. access to be able to to receive uh, you know donated found property that's mm -hmm. eligible to be distributed. Uh, that that would be my only concern mm -hmm. would be that I would be telling people well you'll have to wait till November or April or something of that nature. We do have to hold on to stuff for six mm -hmm. months, so that is a sensible solution. But on the other hand, it's coming in every day, mm -hmm. and so we. We're just overrun with it. Uh, we are going to, uh, I think we're going to put everything we can into the auction. Everything that meets the timelines will, will go into the upcoming auction for 1916 City Hall. So um, that'll help us for a little while, but not very long. We'll probably by March, we'll be back up to our ears again. So, I mean, be maybe we could build a bridge spring. out of them or something. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Um, any anything that I can do to get those out there and get them used, they're not doing anything but collecting dust, right. rusting, and taking up space that we don't have to take up. So, just an idea to and and I will I'll, I'll explore it, distribute them more rapidly. Okay, yeah, I, I'll explore that and see what other agencies are doing. It's something we you know I've never even asked anybody about. We've just kind of. Uh, one plan right now is I got contact for the Boys and Girls Club down in Coffeeville, and the officers always appreciate it when they go out of town because then I can promise them that they won't pick that bike up again. Because mm -hmm. we do, yeah. <laughs> we we pick them, up. we tend to get them back if we're not too careful. We, that's not the yeah. goal. So, anyways, because um, that resets the clock too. But uh, there, there are some agencies that I've been my uh, police chief's advisory committee gave me some direction that they wanted they would like us to proceed with things like this these donations uh, so and that was one of the topics they were discussing with me just last night that mm -hmm. they would like to see us networking more with charitable organizations mm -hmm. and becoming in essence what you're saying become more efficient with the mm -hmm. process and we might instead of us looking for someone else we could be developing a program for others to come to look at us it is well okay. we're exploring some We'll be exploring some new community policing programs, so that would fit right in with that. So. I, it yeah. seems to me the value of seven used bikes is not much when you put, you know, look at the dollar value. No. So I, it seems no. to me like we should come up with a policy and just let you guys decide how to do it rather than bring it to the commission for, you know, such a minor issue. That would probably require a, an adjustment to the ordinance. I, I actually, right. I, I think that's a good idea too. I would support Very that. Good idea. That would improve access as well, mm -hmm. and you know, following the principles there of improving access and speeding things along, that would do it for our citizens. It would better serve the requests mm -hmm. if we did that. Okay, with that, then I'll entertain a motion for item D. I move that we approve the request from M Montgomery County Commissioner Larry McManus for the police department to release bikes for a donation project. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Motion carried. Next item, item E, consider executing the 2018 tenant-based rental assistance grant award between agreement between the City of Independence, Kansas and the Kansas Housing Resource Corporation. Okay. Um, my questions were, this is... Um, this is a yearly or um, process that we go through every every two or three years when a new agreement is is set up between the independent uh, independence housing authority is this something that i believe it's a grant that they apply for apply and it looks like april's not here but um i believe it's a grant they apply for every year the commission authorizes the application and this is just to um execute the agreement because they were awarded a grant and it assist those people that need assistance with um, with rental units okay and it's income based okay uh, and this agreement it looks like it runs through 2020 <coughs> the funding as far as all the funding have have and I have I, spent I up this is really April's area <laughs> okay. so I I couldn't give you any details on that I just know it's something that we do Okay. These you know, standards, annually. They apply for them every year. There's new grant applications for the TBRA. They okay. tend to run 
over multiple periods a year. So you have some overlapping ones that they'll, at any given point in time, they may have two or three TBR grants going. Okay. And the end result is that money has to be spent within a certain timeline, that grant I, money. I believe that that, that is accurate because there is, there is a sunset on those. I, okay. If I remember right from past discussions, I think there's more applicants than there is money. So Always. there's never a carryover. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mike. You no other questions. I'll entertain a motion. I make a motion that uh, move the mayor to uh, to sign the attached grant agreement, number M eighteen SG twenty zero one five zero, and the Home Investment Partnerships Program authorized signature okay. designation form. I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. Motion and second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Item F, consider re sending the condemnation process for 209 Earl Street. Um, on the resolution that's presented, uh, the explanation of, of what occurred um, is different than the explanation it states that whereas the owner of said properties have taken steps to make repairs and or improvements to the property it the, the, seemed like it was just a common error yes, wasn't it yes it's an easy explanation we had the wrong address but reading this it's saying that the owner of 209 did some action that they didn't do mm -hmm. if we made the mistake our statement should reflect that it was in error or something not because if I come back and read this resolution it gives a slant onto the property owner that they were in fault whereas at the time of this notice the property was already cleared yes so you know I think we should modify that statement to really reflect no shadow upon the property owner no agreed, agreed. so um, if that is is modified then i think we can proceed it gets kind of confusing down mm -hmm. there when you have a couple of vacant lots and mm -hmm. a house and well we we we, we lost track of the numbering on that so I, that that's how i was we, down there looking trying to figure that out so we too, we, we lost track difficult. of the numbering so yeah so. okay so do you want to a motion to rescind yeah uh, um, for the wording can we just allow the attorney to correct that you just tell us what you need done okay <laughs> i'm okay. sure kelly can tell us <clears throat> you know i think the statement should just read we're rescinding the uh condemnation We can, we can clean that. Yeah. yeah, we can. Okay. We can do that. So you can even put my name on there as having made the mistake. No, I don't think. <laughs> you know, I, with pleasure. <laughs> it, it, it's not saying somebody was at fault. No, just I'm just saying, saying. It, 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 it was our error. Well, Clearly, our yeah, error. But, so do we? <laughs> can I have a motion? Just I want to. I, I move to rescind the condemnation of 209 Earl Street. Is that mm -hmm. enough for you? Sounds efficient. Okay. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. <clears throat> Next items for commission action. Consider adopting an ordinance authorizing the issuance of the city's taxable industrial revenue bonds series 2018 Textron Aviation Incorporated authorizing certain documents and actions in connection with the issuance of the series 2018 bonds. Uh, I'd like to have Sarah Steele, would you please? <coughs> Thank you, Mayor, Commissioners. You. I'm Sarah Steele with Gilmore and Bell out of Wichita. We're bond council to the city. We are here as part of an ongoing um, number of industrial revenue bond issues for the facility 
that is operated by Textron here in Independence. The, um, the commission back in 2013 held a requisite public hearing and authorized up to a not to exceed amount of $30,600,000. Uh, over time, Textron is continuing to use that $30 million, $30,600,000 of authorization as they continue ongoing improvements out at the facility. Uh, Paula Schabel, the general manager of the facility, is here. If you do have any questions on that, uh, the action before <coughs> you tonight is an authorizing ordinance that will authorize the issuance of uh, taxable industrial revenue bonds. As, as you recall, these are not an obligation in any way of the city, not considered to be a debt. Uh, it's purely an accommodation to Textron to um, permit them some economic benefits of property tax exemption on what they financed in the past year, as well as a, I believe, a sales tax exemption that they would use. And um, the, the bond issue this year is in the amount not to exceed $850,000. And, um, it, you know, it's not a debt of the city in any way. You will never be responsible for any payments, and you're not giving Textron any money. Um, so the final action would just be to authorize the issuance of those bonds. This is the 15th supplemental uh, lease and indenture that we're working on, and um, anticipate doing this again next year. I'd be happy to answer any questions if you have them. Any questions? None. No. Question? You did a good job. <clears throat> I guess after numerous presentations, it I've done gets a few. better. Thank you. So if we have no other questions, then uh, I think this time we'll, we're ready to entertain a motion. So I do have a motion. I move to approve an ordinance authorizing the issuance of the city's Taxable Industrial Revenue Bonds Series 2018, Textron Aviation Incorporated, authorizing certain documents and actions in connection with the issuance of the Series 2018 bonds. I second. Hey, I have a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, sir. Thank you very Thank much. You. Next item on the agenda is consider recommendation from the Planning Commission to adopt an ordinance implementing text amendments to Appendix B, Zoning of the City Code, including Appendix A, listing of permitted and conditional uses and any related definitions in Article 4, rules and interpretations relating to microbreweries, bottling, and canning soft drinks and carbonated water and beer, wine, and alcoholic beverages wholesale. Mayor, I can make this really simple. On the next slide, everything in yellow <coughs> is the changes. It's adding um, some definitions, and then on the conditional and permitted use table on the right, the highlighted in yellow shows the modifications to the um, zoning ordinance. Okay. Mr. Mayor, I would like to excuse myself from this discussion. Sure. Sit down. Okay. This was brought to the commission three or four meetings past as initiating the text amendment to yes. go uh, to the planning and zoning yes. board. So the planning and zoning board has made this recommendation. Made the, made, reviewed and made the recommendation. Okay. I, I'm sorry I didn't see you come forward. And That's great. Your name? Uh, Robert Box. And I forgot your role in the brewery. My, uh, myself and my wife are the owners um, of Indy Brew Works. Okay. I think at that time, didn't you present some pictures, some concepts for the facility too? Uh, yes, sir, we have. Okay. So, and we've, <clears throat> we're at the point where we have our architectural drawings finished. 
Um, so we're in the, the process of getting the last, um, everything kind of priced out so that we can start getting all the permits in place for construction to start. Okay. So that's where we're at as far as the, the planning portion of it. It's, is we've got the architectural drawings finished. Okay. Uh, I believe, Kelly, when you first brought it to us, it was, the, the reason was that our zoning ordinance did not address anywhere in it, this type of facility. So yeah. for it to locate or any other type of facility locate in the city, we needed to correct our planning and zoning. So it was twofold. It not only addresses this, but future yes. operations also. For any of those zones, we did not have a definition for microbrewery. <clears throat> the closest thing we have was distillery, which doesn't meet the statutory yeah. definition. So we pulled the statutory definitions and, and utilized those. Hmm. And he, the, uh, to continue their process, once this is done, they will still need to apply for their right. conditional use permit for this. So he will have um, that hmm. step to go through, but this, this lays the groundwork so that he can hmm. do that. Right. All it does is sets the, the foundation for Absolutely. things to come. Now he still has to go, go through, through the all the submittal process and everyone still. within 200 feet will be notified of, mm. of that hearing before the planning commission right. which will ultimately come back to you guys right so okay um do you have any questions no i don't thank you i don't think i have any others so i'll entertain a motion i make a motion that um let me see where am I? Okay, here we go. I move to adopt an ordinance implementing tax amendments to the Code of the City of Independence, Kansas, specifically Appendix B, zoning code related to microbreweries, bottling and canning soft drinks and carbonated water, and beer, wine, and alcoholic beverages, wholesale as recommended by the Planning Commission. Okay, with that, I'll second the motion. The motion and second, I'll I'll ask all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Okay. Next item on the agenda is consider a request from USD 446 to rezone tracts of land from R4 medium density multifamily dwelling district to <coughs> M1 light industrial district on the east side of the 2200 block of North 21st Street. And this item also has went before the Planning Commission and they have made a recommendation. Uh, the map um, shows the location of the property that they purchased. Um, the uh, shaded area shows the city limit boundaries, if you wondered what that was. So that's what that is. Um, this shows the zoning. Um, the area to be rezoned is, is shown approximately in that area um, on the R4. That was a uh, zone for the uh, Cohen Estuary Pheasant Points. And at one time they owned that whole uh, piece and then they sold part of it off and then now the schools bar bought that uh, other piece of that. Um, and then this actually is the um, the the map from the comprehensive plan from 1982. I actually um, did a transparent overlay over a, an aerial. It was a little hard to match up because it wasn't exactly to scale, but I did the best I could. But um, that area up at the, and I don't know if you can see kind of that gray dot, and it also shows kind of a red pin up there, um, shows the approximate uh, location. Um, in that map, in the general development plan map, the gray areas are industrial. The uh, yellow areas are residential. The blue areas are public, the green areas are recreation, and the red areas are commercial. And so that kind of gives you an idea. And this is a 1982 map. We have not had the comp plan updated. The Planning Commission generally asks for that to be funded every year, but due to budgetary reasons, it's usually, it hasn't been funded. The last time we went out for bids for it, it was uh, quite higher than um, you know, we had anticipated, so it didn't get done the last time we went out for bids for that. So that shows that. This is the staff recommendation. 
um, basically states that they have to follow the laws, that the, all the parking entrance and exits drives must be designed to minimize traffic congestion on public streets, areas adjacent to residential districts shall be designed to minimize disturbance of residents by the erection between the industrial and residential uses of a site obscuring fence of not less than five feet, not more than six feet in height. A separate vision clearance is required. Any additional exterior lighting on site will be designed in such a way that it will not be directed toward or create a nuisance to any adjoining properties. Such lighting will need to be approved by the zoning administrator. To limit noise that could affect adjoining areas, there shall be no outside audio or paging equipment that exceeds a volume level that can be heard at any of the adjoining residential dwellings. The location of solid waste equipment shall be designed by the company and will need to be approved by city staff. All solid waste shall be kept in containers which shall be screened from adjoining properties. Any off-street parking areas will meet the minimum off-street parking requirements, shall be maintained in appearance and shall be used solely for the parking of USD 446 vehicles and employee vehicles. Such parking area may not be used for the storage of equipment or other items. A drainage plan designed to adequately handle a 10-year or greater storm event must be submitted by an engineer license in the state of Kansas to ensure that any increased runoff will be dealt with in such a way so as not to negatively impact nearby or downstream properties. All property lines must be established by a surveyor licensed in the state of Kansas. A detailed site plan shall be submitted to and approved by city staff prior to any such work commencing. All improvements will be maintained and kept in serviceable condition and the property must be kept free of debris and trash. And the uh, property uh, applicant is here and he has some additional information if Rusty wants to come up um, because they have done a topographical study since they submitted this that he would like to go over and also a site plan to show where the building is going to be built okay. on the property. Now, the requirements that you... Go back. Yes, that you read are basically just from the planning and zoning that relates to that M1 zone. It's not special requirements. Yeah, they are. They're they are, additional. You're adding additional. These are additional conditions okay. in addition to the rezoning that will be part of the rezoning resolution okay. or ordinance. So these are additional. They're not just and the boilerplate stuff. And they won't need a conditional use mm -mm. permit. It's acceptable in that zone. We could have done the rezoning with the conditional use <clears throat> and put these exact same um, requirements in. But when I've talked to a zoning attorney before, he said, why don't you just put it in the right. zoning ordinance instead of doing a separate conditional use? And so that's what we're doing now. In the past, we have done a conditional use with the additional requirements. In this case, we have been advised um, since then that, that it would be good to just put it yeah. in. The rezoning is much more practical. Than right. And so we did it that way this use. time. But you're correct. In the past, we have done mm -hmm. it the other way. But this is a little cleaner. Okay. I have this one and I have the one with the site plan overlaid. Okay. Uh, it's hard to see the numbers on that one. Um, if you look up there, you can kind of see the contour of the, the darker green. That water, um, we'll have an actual study done, but that water typically will go towards the water tower. Um, the, actual uh, is 830 at the water tower and then where we're actually going to build is the high point at 837 and so the water from the area where we're going to build and put everything should run down towards the water tower for the most part i know at the zoning meeting they had some concerns uh, one of the neighbors did that all the water would go uh, towards the north and then back towards the west but where we're going to build this, it won't change the water flow to that direction. It will instead go towards the water tower. That's kind of the direction all of that flows in that darker green area. Now the lighter green in that area will continue to go the direction that it's going. Um, we're in conversations where the line, there's, a, there's kind of a straight line across there where it starts turning to the lighter green. Cohen Esri is interested in that 1.83 acres um, because they're interested in a swimming pool at Pheasant Points, I believe. I think you guys know about that. Uh, at least I heard yeah. in the city. So, um, 
And so we're in talks with them about possibly uh, selling that back to them or doing some making arrangements with them to take that, which would square us off to six acres, and then that would give them the 1.83 um, is something that we're looking at. But for the most part, we're going to use about 200 feet by 300 feet will actually be the size of the facility there. It'll be a little, about 220 feet actually running north and south if you're looking on that side of that map. And on that side, we'll have a 200 foot uh, lean-to building, three-sided building in which we'll park all 16 buses, which so that they won't be seen by the neighbors to the west, which is the county side, they won't be seen there. And then we have a couple options on the fencing we would like to continue whatever color metal we use on the building, continue that as a six foot fence around to the north side, which would block it off to Pheasant Point, which would be the other residential area near us. And then from the northeast corner back around to the southwest corner would then be a six foot uh, chain link fence with, fence with two gates, because that is both surrounded by currently agricultural property. Um, so there won't be any residential directly inside of those two sides, but the other two sides we would put uh, something to block it off. Um, so we would ask that you would consider rezoning that so that we could put that there. Um, and I know there's another part with that. Um, the One of the limitations that has been put on there is that we would have to pave or not asphalt concrete that entire area and that's kind of a deal breaker for us so I don't know what we need to do with talking with the architects and we got an engineer on we talked with that it would be better to have gravel which would absorb more of the water than if we had concrete and asphalt to try to wash it all off and deal with because I know one of the requirements is we will have to do an engineered water study to see what we're going to do with the water um, so that's what we would like for you to consider doing is first rezoning and then possibly looking at, uh, since we're light industrial, allowing us to use gravel in that area rather than uh, using pavement or concrete. And the road leading from 21st down to the water tower is currently gravel anyway. So we would be connecting to a gravel road uh, for access anyway. But that is our request. And, uh, I have the actual topographic over here if you want to see it. That's the actual topographic of the, and, and I can leave that here for you to look at. And the other thing is this is our site development plan. And I know you can't see it real well, but that's the same. And you can see that we're not using all the area. And then this area here from there, clear down to there, would be that 200 foot length lean to building where we park buses. Uh, we need to plug those in in the winter is why we would have that. And they would just, it's basically a 14 foot overhang building. We just poke them in the front end and plug them in at night is what it's really for. It won't cover the entire bus, but just the front end of them uh, would be plugged in at night. And so we would have that building along 21st and then our main bus barn, which would have two bays. Uh, that would actually be for buses to go in and be repaired or oil changed and things. And then we have an optional wash bay on the outside, uh, depending on the cost and where we're at. Uh, that's one of those things that we may take off, and they just may have to work in the old-fashioned way. Mm -hmm. uh, any questions for okay. me? Any questions? Any question do? Rusty, I'm assuming you looked at a lot of possible locations. We have. What, <clears throat> what was it about this location that um, Well, the, the greatest the thing about this location is the access. Um, it's close to the schools, which if you, if we ever open that road up that's gravel that we're going to access, that is actually about a block from Jefferson Elementary School. So that would be great access for us uh, to come in. We wanted it near town if we could. We didn't go out looking for sites in town specifically um, because we want to be good neighbors and we felt like that would be a problem. Um, the neighbors on the west side there, um, one came to our zoning meeting and he was okay with us doing this. He was worried more about a kid getting run over by the traffic that comes down 21st Street from the plant 
He said they sometimes drive fast, and he wanted me to be aware of that. And I said, well, that's good, because there won't be kids out there anyway. It's just big right. buses, and mm -hmm. I don't think they'll drive fast when they see one of them pull out. I hope not, anyway. Um, so that was a concern, <laughs> but the biggest thing is we wanted close proximity to schools, sure. if we could, to town. Um, I know we own some property, 35 acres, to the uh, south of Jefferson Elementary, and then it would be to the um, west of Eisenhower Elementary. Mm -hmm. But the problem with that is um, we talked with the housing authority, and they would really like to someday see that turned into housing area, and we felt like that was too much of a residential area to put those buses into, whereas this is right on the edge. A lot of the other properties we looked at were either in the county or on the edge of the county. Um, we looked at a couple spots on Peter Pan Road, but those, um, the problems with those was Peter Pan Road is really not good for us to put buses on and the traffic that comes down Peter Pan Road uh, wouldn't be real compatible. Um, so so we, had, we looked at a lot of spots, we talked through every one of them thoroughly, um, and this one seems to fit our needs the best. And I, I know there's not a large amount of neighbors around there that we're going to affect. Um, so that was part of why this is the one that we landed on uh, to be the spot because of close proximity and we felt like we could still be good neighbors in that area based on what was surrounding that area. Hmm. So like the location of the current bus barn, just, I mean, that's a bad location just because it's not close. No. I'm not saying that's a bad location. We, I mean, we, not as we good as this one. We had talks with them uh -huh. about purchasing that. Um, our concern is things that may be there that we don't want to buy that problem or that headache. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not saying that's totally out at this point. I don't think anything's out uh, because if this doesn't work out for us, uh, we're going to have to go back to playing A, B, C, or D or more. Uh, sure. Because. Um, we're, we're, we're committed to doing this. Mm -hmm. We've told Durham that we are no longer going to be with right. them. Yeah. And w so that means we are committed by January um, to start construction of doing something. Uh, um, because we're basically January of 19? January of 19. <laughs> oh, coming um, coming right up. To, <laughs> it's coming right up. Um, we're going to have buses delivered uh, by the 1st of June, and we'll basically be starting to take over we don't do a lot in the summer, mm -hmm. so we're going to make sure that we get our buses there and Durham will be pulling out. Yeah. Um, and I don't think Durham also serves Cherryville and Parsons from our location, and it's my understanding that both of them have pulled out also. Um, so basically, I don't think Durham will be in town anymore at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, it, I, I, everything I've heard and read about your plan to provide your own bus service seems like a winner. I just, um, you know, looking at the big picture, I wouldn't want this to be a detriment to the area. I'd rather it be in an area that, where it would be an advantage. It would be a, you know, a net gain for everyone. I'm not sure that that's true of this, this location. I, well, I don't know enough, actually, but right. it seems like it could be a, a negative uh, well, impact I, on some. I certainly don't believe that it's going to be a negative. I think it's going to be a positive to the area. Right now, it's farm ground. It's not being used for anything productive other than farm ground right. um, and we would certainly take care of the area better than it's being taken care of now. I think that it would work there because there's not a lot of population um, so I, I guess I just respectfully disagree. I think sure. it would be a good location mm -hmm. and we certainly want to be good stewards and we want to be good neighbors. That's why we haven't chosen property we already own and some other things. So. Yeah, well, I appreciate that. I just, again, I don't you know, I, I've sure, just I started looking at this. I, I took a vacation last week, so I haven't had time to review it properly. But, but the uh, it feels to me like it's going to lower the value of those apartments because they're going to be looking out at a bus barn. Or am I confused? They're going to be looking out of metal fence. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Yeah, six and foot it's, high metal fence. Right. But the buses are a lot taller than six foot. Correct. So they they will see the buses lined up there as they look out their window now. They will. <coughs> just want to make sure I was clear on that. Rusty, when I talked to I talked to one of the neighbors uh, out there earlier uh, this morning, and uh, who had talked to a couple of other neighbors, one that had gone to the planning and zoning meeting, and at the time, his and their concerns were about 
water runoff. They didn't know exactly where the building was going to be placed on that site, and I had a chance to walk the site, and I, I didn't know how many acres you were talking about, and you, I think you specified six, six or seven acres is what you would be occupying. We, we actually own 7.83 now. Okay. We're talking about uh, selling or doing away with 1.83 mm -hmm. on the north end, which would give us six acres, but we're only going to use 220 feet by approximately 300 feet. The rest of it will remain in grass or cropland the way it is now. Okay. So the site you see up there is all mm -hmm. the actual ground we're going to use or utilize. Okay. At the time, they didn't know exactly where the, the building sure. was going we, to be sited at. They thought it might be closer to the road. They were concerned about uh, water runoff. They were concerned about uh, that's not, that's a narrow roadway, 21st Street is, and they were concerned about uh, traffic coming in and out of that uh, building, the size of the buses, and that that roadway is is heavily used, uh, well, for people that are trying to get uh, uh, to, to standard motors, right. school. There's a lot of traffic at various times on that particular road. And then their, their other concerns were, if it was close to the road, would that be something that they would be, be looking at throughout the year, if there would be some Actually, we landscaping and other... other uh, the back side of that building up there would mm -hmm. be 40 feet from basically the ditch of the road. Okay. It would be 40 feet in, and we were planning to plant trees along there. That was one of the things that the neighbor that said he didn't mind, he didn't mind the building being there. I uh, just asked, can you plant some trees? And I said, sure. Um, and, and we had to s offset it off the property enough that if we planted trees, when they came up, the electric company, as you right. know, wouldn't start cutting them, the tops of them off. So <laughs> we wanted to make sure that we were 40 feet away from right. the telephone poles, basically, is what we looked at when we went out there and started saying, okay, where's the corner of this thing going to be? Uh, so that we can plant trees along that edge. And then we have plenty of room on the north end, which would be facing pheasant points to also plant trees on that end. So, I mean, that is something that we plan to do um, already, and that came up at the zoning from that individual that brought that up that maybe we could plant some trees. So we moved it further into the property to make sure that we had room to do that. Um, so, it, so it will actually be a way. Now, the width of 21st, I agree, isn't great but it's a lot better than Peter Pan Road. And that's what um, a lot, couple of our other options was there, and still, I guess still remains there, but the, the problem with Peter Pan Road is it literally drops off into ditches almost right. instantly. Um, and it seems very narrow compared to 21st Street. And I couldn't give you the exact footage on that, sure. but if you drive them, it certainly looks a lot narrower than 21st. Mm -hmm. um, the, and the other, um, uh, concern was um, well you, you brought this up um, about Cherryvale mm -hmm. uh, not not uh, providing their own bus service and not using uh, Dunham anymore or Durham anymore mm -hmm. and uh, so there's a potential that facility would be vacated by them they have on been the, in on contact the east, on the east edge of town yeah. right they have been in contact <coughs> with us about purchasing that area okay. um, Environmental concerns is what we're kind of backing off of that area for. Okay. Um, I'm not saying it's completely out of the picture, but at this point the board has not wanted to buy those environmental concerns um, and, and have them strapped to us long into the future out there. So we've, we've been slow to okay. make a deal with them on that. Uh, I certainly have been in contact. Actually, who owns that is the Crabtree family which it used to be Crabtree Harmon, right. and then Durham came in and they've just leased the building from Crabtree Harmon. And so okay. we have been in contact with them. Um, and, and like I say, we haven't ruled anything out because we understand this is a process and we're trying to work <laughs> through this process before we go somewhere else because we feel like this is best for us. Um, and we feel like we can be good stewards to our neighbors, but you know, it's all in the eye of the beholder, too. Like Gary said, sure. you're still going to see the buses. You're still going to see some things. And, and that's exactly right. 
now with the with the location of the building and the runoff was uh, the study or shows that it would run off toward the east the now the, the drainage not, not off of that <coughs> building some of that would go to that ditch to the west, west okay but everything from the edge of that three-sided building we're talking about where we mm -hmm. park those buses right we believe at this point based on the topography it's going to run to the west and then turn to the south and run down south which eventually will be in the whiskey river issue or whiskey I call whiskey it creek. creek whiskey I'm creek sorry. area whiskey creek area where you're i think you guys are doing a study on that one now so um, that's where it's currently going now everything if you look where it turns lighter colored there all of that goes to the north and then to the west which i think um, that's mr roth gibbs property uh, he's he has talked to me about concerns about that uh, but i don't other than the runoff the building going into that ditch the rest of it should go the other way and if we needed to put guttering on that and run it a different way i don't know what the water study would show but water studies as you guys know are very expensive so we're going to wait to make sure we've got the okay to build this and use gravel and if we can't get that then we're not going to pay for the water study because it, it, it would be a waste sure. of taxpayer money if we can't get to the point we need to get to anyway yeah, i know we're just really considering the rezoning part but you always look at the the other parts of uh, retention ponds and direction of runoff and uh, the impact on Whiskey Creek. It's something that is always going to come up and uh, with the location you might have to adjust the building to get a retention pond since it goes south to carry you know not only off the building but off the, the parking area. Looking at, at land use um, when we look at converting the residential area to a, a light industrial um, it works quite a ways from standard motors aren't we isn't that yeah I can bring that back <clears throat> um, yeah because standard motors are <clears throat> the light gray is standard motors yes. yeah. and then the dark gray smaller <clears throat> one with the red dot above it is their location so always when you put in uh, a, a different land use that what's predominantly there you need to look at how that could lead to further development that's what seeing in between standard motors now that road south of your property is that a private road or just I, a service drive it's a service drive for the um, it's water a service tower. drive for the the water, water tower, tower. Okay. but that is also um, <clears throat> also planned you know it's city owned to where it could be developed to extend uh, mulberry okay right, mulberry it would be connecting sorry. with mulberry coming from <clears throat> okay it would take a little jog is. by the four county complex because it's not exactly lined up uh, but yeah. um but that was the future plan someday and the gray area down here that's our industrial park that's all Laurel street yeah that's okay. yeah that that is all like i said this is an 82 plan um not everything has developed the way the plan was color coded um but in the plan that that area was suggested to be uh, developed as industrial in the future okay <clears throat> i know the planning and zoning board is reviewing the paving modifications to the zoning now so yeah there your uh, suggestions that mm -hmm. you made previously we will take to them for their december 4th yeah. meeting okay. to see what they want to revise and then we'll bring that back to you okay so i don't have any more questions to you i i'm i'm rarely at a loss for words but I, I just got back late last night and I just had a little time to look at this today so I 
I have more questions than answers, I guess. Well, uh, and I don't want to pressure. I don't want to hold you up either. Well, on a decision, Gary. I, I know you, and if you have questions, call me. Call my cell phone, and I'll visit with you, and I'll try to help you answer those. That would be great. Where I can. Be so happy to go out and look at the property with you, whatever you want to do. Yeah, that would be our, my preference. But. Our next commission meeting is the second week of two weeks from tonight. I two think. weeks from tonight. December 13th. We could table action to allow you. I would love a little time to do my homework because I, I really, I, I, I can't say I know where I stand on this issue at this point. But if you guys have a strong opinion one way or the other, then I'm extraneous anyway. <clears throat> I'm not opposed to giving you time to look at That'd it. That'd be great. It's, land use is one of the most important parts yeah. of the city. Absolutely. And it's important for you, your access, well, you, all this research you've done to find this spot and uh, the impact of the neighbors and the impact on on you too so yeah uh, nothing's more important than our schools right but we want to make sure we get the best spot for this yeah we agree yeah yeah and my my other concern that was brought out was that this some of this water flow will end up in whiskey creek and we're having a study done on that so we're just we're adding more potential more water to flow into a waterway that that we are having a study on that we have issues with downstream so that's another thing to to ponder to consider which the so, restrictions do address that that they are not to create any additional water runoff and that they have to have that water study done okay. you want to wait yeah, that'd be my preference okay. to tape it for the next meeting. And can you leave the Rusty? Can you leave the drawings so we can look yeah. at? Um, I need more. You've got the contour numbers on. The contour elevations. numbers are on here. Okay. And you can kind of see the high spot, but that goes really to the low there. It starts going high again down on that further that, in, so it yeah. it flows that way. That'll really help. Yep, and then the building. There's some of the contour, but we didn't put all of it on down um, on the actual one where the building side is. So okay. You're welcome to it. Thank you. If I can help in any way, feel free to call me. I'd be happy well, to go look at it with you or talk to you any way we can about it. Thank you, Rusty. Okay. We Thank really you. appreciate Thank you. Very appreciate much appreciate all you do. Yes. So we'll bring this back to our next December 13th. Meeting. Okay, the next item D, consider a request from the Chamber of Commerce to support the first impressions community assessment through K-State Research and Extension and provide an update on Celebrity Park. Which do you want to do first? Celebration Park. Celebration. Yeah. I'll, I'll do it all and all together. I'll start with Celebration Park. Okay. The top piece is what I'm going to Well. Okay, so I'm here to talk about Celebration Park. Um, as I think you all know, um, we did the ribbon cutting on Veterans Day of Honor. It was a very appropriate day to celebrate that. And um, I again just wanted to thank the Commission for their faith and the Chamber Pride Committee to take that project on and beautify that land. I want to give um, credit where credit's due and on the flash that you're, or the flyer you have in front of you, um, there were the, the top three lines are the three key players in all of this. The Lucille Gibson Thompson Trust, along with Tim Emmert, um, the Independence Community Chest, and then John Heckman of Heckman Associates. The other donors um, are all in alphabetical order, listing the American Legion and Doug Harlan, Atmos Energy, the City of Independence, the Community Foundation for Independence, Equity Bank, Steve Greer with Greer Electric, the Chamber of Commerce, Main Street, the Southeast Kansas Association of Realtors, St. John, Jane, uh, Jane Phillips, TLC Nursery and Outdoor Living, and the VFW Post. Um, all either contributed money towards the project or a tremendous amount of in-kind support. 
Um, the city of Independence is listed on there because um, you allowed us to beautify that land, and um, and and we appreciate the opportunity to do so. And the ch and the Chamber Pride Committee um, looks forward to its next big project. I did some tallying of the um, the money and the in-kind support that was put into the Celebration Park, and it's valued at over $115,000 with um, the money that was put into the property, as well as all of the, the value of all of the, the in-kind efforts. So um, I believe that, um, uh, I, I think I, I would like to point out that, um, you know, it, it was part of the Roger Brooks assessment that that was a, a tremendous eyesore in our community when he came to our community in, in 2014 and assessed independence. And, and um, of course, it was owned by multimillionaire Phil Ruffin, and um, who's, who appeared to be kind of um, uh, hard to get a hold of, uh, to say the least. And because of the efforts of Don Hill probably a couple of years ago, and um, the efforts of Matt Sutherland, who reached out and had some connections with him as well. That property was then donated um, to the museum. And um, through some agreements with the museum, in order to transfer that, that land from the museum over to the city, um, some money was exchanged to make that happen and so that it didn't um, fall by the wayside and, and end up uh, being a, a project that we couldn't tackle in a timely a timely fashion actually our own city commissioner um, Gary Hogsett and our former city manager Mickey Webb both wrote personal checks for a thousand dollars in order to um, make that happen and to keep that from not just um, sitting idle and and becoming something that we couldn't make uh, a reality so um, I appreciate Gary and I appreciate Mickey Webb's um, financial contribution I appreciate the museum um, uh, then providing the city with that that land and um, again I appreciate your faith in in letting the the pride committee work to beautify that land and of course Tim Emmert and um, and and everybody who put towards a lot of time and effort and money with the statues um, that that's actually um, the hallmark of the statues in the community now um, and uh, it's it's just an incredible source of beautification which ties into why I'm here tonight. So um, I'll, I'll finish the conversation around Celebration Park and, and just saying that um, the, uh, the Pride Committee is, is now um, finished with um, the property for the most part. Um, uh, Main Street's actually working on a Christmas tree right now up on the property and doing some lighting and um, using that flagpole to put some lights out. We're, we're trying to figure out how to make that happen um, before the holidays. And um, we have some other, other ideas and, and events that we'll hold on that property. But um, we look forward to taking on a new project. I don't know what it's going to be, but I'm sure it will be um, amazing. And, and uh, we'll keep you posted <laughs> on what we do. Um, and that fits in with the strategic plan for beautification, too. So I say that because the Chamber and the Pride Committee want you to know that we want to be on board with, with the projects that you choose for beautification in the future as part of the city's strategic plan and to be sure and involve us. Um, we are now under the umbrella of um, the Kansas State Pride Organization, which is affiliated with the Kansas State Research and Extension Office, um, which again is, um, is uh, another reason why I'm here to talk to you this evening. So as I mentioned, or do you have any questions about Celebration Park? Any? All right. No. Um, so I, I said that um, in 2014, Roger Brooks came to our community. The chamber paid for him to come and do a community assessment. Um, it was done. It was great. And um, there were a lot of things on that list to do and a lot of things that were very expensive to make happen. And I'm revisiting um, his, uh, his assessment and kind of looking at um, where we've been and, and where we are now. And I just I made a few notes. I mean, the beautification that's happened in downtown and continues to happen. You know, people didn't just put out mums and beautify it for one season or, or geraniums. They continue to beautify the downtown. They continue to put up bunting when it's um, uh, days of patriotism. They continue to light their storefronts. Um, they've really championed that and owned it, and we're very appreciative of our downtown retailers understanding the importance of beautifying the downtown and making that a draw. 
um, the the city championed um, uh, was it Rod, uh, Doug Pickert's uh, signage plan that you all know about um, from Indigo Designs, and and that's just that's incredibly expensive investment, um, but we look forward to taking little bitty bites of that elephant and, and getting some wayfinding signage in our community to make it easier for visitors um, and newcomers to navigate independence. Uh, when you look at what they suggested out at the park, Barb's made great strides out there. Um, he talked about not knowing where the park and the zoo was, you know, and, and now there's a beautiful new sign that leads people to that direction. Eventually there's going to be um, the train trestle when you're headed uh, north on Penn Avenue that will have great um, advertisements for what lies ahead as far as the park and the zoo. Um, she's had some Eagle Scouts um, come into the park and, and do some projects in there with um, QR codes to make sure that um, when people are looking at the exhibits they can understand what the exhibits are. You know, he just, he talked about numerous, um, numerous things. The museum um, fell into that same category. What can you do in the museum to um, you know, make it appealing and, and now they've done a lot of moving things around in there and they've moved their gift store around. They've done some QR codes. It's accessible with the, um, the elevator and um, uh, they, they talk to us about marketing brochures and things like that, updating everything, giving it all a fresh look and we're in the middle of, of that. We have lots of them done and we have um, a few more that we need to get done but we really feel like our marketing materials um, are, are much better than they were. Then I could go on and on but, and with things that we've done, but I could also go on and on with things that still need to be done. It's a work in progress, and, and if money weren't an issue, we could hammer it out just like that, but it is an issue. So we have to be patient with ourselves, I think, and, and just take, um, uh, take baby steps, and, and someday we're, we're, going, we're, we're already amazing, but someday we're going to be even more amazing <laughs> um, with all the things that he talked about. So what's cool about um, the first impressions program that I, I gave you the information on is um, it's in contrast to Roger Brooks, this is free. So um, anytime there's a free opportunity, I, I believe um, if we can benefit in any way, shape or form, we should jump on the opportunity. So um, they approached us. They look, at, they look at cities, they look at chambers, they look at pride committees, they, they look at lots of different organizations like that when they, when they partner. And um, they called the chamber and asked us if we wanted to participate. And, and ironically, we're also a pride committee, so we're kind of um, two of the, the entities that they look at when they're partnering. Um, what it basically is, I mean, I could, I could read this for the, the <laughs> listening audience, but um, in short version, it is an opportunity for um, some outside individuals to come into our community and be secret shoppers, um, move around the community to different places that they've been told to go to, and assess the community um, kind of on a, on a, 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 a secret shopper um, kind of way, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And in return, we do the same thing. Um, we load up and we go into their community and assess them. It's a partnership. It's not not trying to outdo the other one or paybacks for what they said about us. Um, <laughs> but um, we're partnering with uh, with Fort Scott. <clears throat> They've already been selected, and um, we will be going into training the 30th or 30 yeah 30th of January, I believe. We'll be getting together with um, Nancy Daniels from the K State Research and Extension Office. She'll be coming to Independence and giving us some training. And then we have about six weeks to um, make our visit to Fort Scott and assess their community. And then we will put together all of our findings and we turn them over to K-State and they put the report together and then they come back to the community and, um, and give their report on, on the findings of the, the Fort Scott group that came to our community. Um, and, and we will be doing the same thing. They, they like to have a community meeting, much like the one that Roger Brooks had. Um, and so because First Friday is um, you know, a, a successful event that draws a lot of people, um, we're going to use First Friday as our venue to um, deliver that message. And we have saved um, the entire time for First Friday in May, and that will be tentatively when they come and, um, and make that presentation. So um, 
we're hoping that uh, that that all works out and the timing is is good um, and uh, I'm trying to think if there's if there's anything else I guess the reason why I'm here in case someone's wondering how the city plays into this is um, Leonard has a copy of um, the contract that we sign and and basically it's it's the chamber partnering with K-State Research and Extension saying that we're going to get a group to, of people together and they will be um, pride committee members um, that will be going and they ask for three but actually we'll probably be taking six or nine um, because you go big or go home so we're gonna we're gonna take a load <laughs> over um, and the reason why is because you want to have a driver and then you want to have a couple of people that are in the car and you'll have the main person taking all the notes and the information but we're, we're also going to have some other people just so we can have some more eyes on the community and they actually were excited that we were going to bring that many people um, because the more the better um, but they only require there to be three and so the part that I'm asking um, Mayor Kaflish to sign is is the part that says I fully support and endorse our community participating in first impressions program I allow permission for the reports to be posted on the case state research and extension community development pages and then I would need a, a signature on that um, and then that allows us to go ahead and move forward with the training and then the community assessment which will be followed up with the um, uh, report from K-State. So it's a formal acknowledgement that we know they're coming. It and, is. And it's exactly that, Leonard. It, basically what it is. It yeah. is. They Because I, I said, I don't understand wh where the city comes into this if we're partnering with the chamber. And they said, because we want to be a good neighbor, we want to be respectful, and we want the commission or the councils in those cities we're participating in to know that you have people from outside the community coming in and um, assessing that community and then be open and be very supportive of the findings. Because when they come to us, it's going to be like Roger Brooks. They're going to lay it all out, and some of it's going to be hard to hear. And, um, and they want us to embrace it and to, to take it and, and use it to make change. And I think that they see great value in making sure that those people that make that change are the three of you, that we have you on board. So. And that was actually my question when I was going through the packet and support what that we're not really part of, but looking at the application and from their viewpoint, I could understand them wanting to feel comfortable that we, as a governing body, uh, are knowledgeable that they are coming here to interact with the community and then freely report uh, their findings to us. And, uh, you know, I know sometimes it's you learn more from what you've done wrong than ever what you've done right. And you need somebody coming in from the outside giving that impression. And, uh, you know, it, it is a gamble to put yourself on the line, but uh, the price is right. It is. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I, at, at first, like you said, the question of why, but I, I can see their, their desire to have the governing body authorize signing this and acknowledge and then gives us the opportunity to let the community know that we're aware and we're willing to, to lay ourselves out before this group and receive suggestions. Mm -hmm. So I don't have any questions. Uh, you know, I see it uh, as an opportunity to learn for us. So, yeah. Commissioners, your opinions, your you know, desires? I, and I think you're totally right what you said. It, it says it all first impression. <laughs> when you come into a community, what do you see? And you're seeing it from eyes of people that don't live here that are just coming coming into the community for the first time. What, you know, what, what potential do they see? What do they like? What areas do we need to improve? Mm -hmm. What would they like to see? Yeah, I, and, and you can't beat the prize free. Mm -hmm. Having a uh, ownership of a boutique, and it's a franchise, they send in secret shoppers. And somebody that's never set foot in your store, they come up with a list, a long list of things like, why didn't you do this, and why don't you do this? Because you see it every day, mm -hmm. and I, I think it's invaluable. I, 
I, I think we'd have to be crazy to pass this opportunity up. I think it's fantastic. I can't wait to see their, their findings. Um, I say let's do it. Okay. So, no more discussion, no more questions concerning? No, I don't have any. Then I'll entertain a motion. I move that we support the First Impressions Community Assessment through K-State Research and Extension. Second. Before, I, I think since it requires the mayor's signature, I think the motion should contain something about authorizing the mayor to sign it. Okay. I move that we uh, authorize the mayor to sign the First, uh, First Impressions okay. Community Application for the uh, First impressions can be assessment through K-State Research and Extension. How's that? Okay, good. Now, do I have a second on that? Second. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks, Leonard. All in favor, <laughs> signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank Want you. Want it now? Sure. Thank you. And thank you again for, again, your faith in the, the Pride Committee and um, remember us when you're looking at beautification projects and when you, when you need our help, we're there to... We're there to help out. Okay. Did you right. want the other parts? Thank back? you. Thank you. Bob. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Lisa. The next item on the agenda is consider setting the date of January 24th, 2019 at 5.30 p.m. for a public hearing to consider the condemnation of a uh, structure located at 215 South Earl. Yes, we would, uh, we would like to staff's recommendation that we have the correct address <laughs> and would, uh, it is our recommendation and our hope that we can <clears throat> move forward with setting a date to consider condemnation of 215 South Earl on January 24th, 2019. On the RCA background, it's got 209 South Earl. Was that just reference in the air or? It should it? be. It should be two. It should definitely be 215 South okay. Earl. And this is the house that we discussed with the pictures yes. yeah. and everything. Yes. Okay. We've already voted on it once. Any questions? No. No questions. I'll entertain a motion. I make a motion that, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I move to set the date of January 24th, <clears throat> 2019, for a public hearing to consider a condemnation of the structure located at 215 South Earl Street. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by <clears throat> saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. <clears throat> Item F, consider setting the date of January 24th, 2019 at 5.30 p.m. for a public hearing to consider the condemnation of a structure located at 417 South 6th. Yes. Now, the owner was here, uh, had worked a full shift and has to be to work at <clears throat> 5 o'clock in the morning, so said he was going to go home and go to sleep um, to get ready for his work day. Um, he said is it his intent to repair the property? I told him that he has until January 24th to work together as plan. You know, all we're going to do tonight is schedule uh, to consider condemnation on January 24th, 2019. And he understood that. He said, but it is definitely his intent to seek to repair that property. And so far, he has completed adequately shoring the structure. He so has he has gone is, in and put temporary shoring in there. Yes, and it is stable at this time. Yes. Okay. Yes. And uh, has he been cooperating with yes. with you through the process? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, he has. Um, currently, are they living there? It is my understanding that he has found another property to live in, and I think he says he still has items in there, but I, I'm not sure if they're living there full time or not. So in the, in the past where we've gone ahead and 
authorized uh, the public hearing. At the public hearing, it's an opportunity for you to come and mm -hmm. advise to right and what his what his plan is and how he what's been done up to that point and what his plan is to to remedy the situation is as we recall this is this from the range that we had in august he had right. a section of the uh foundation <laughs> and the wall uh, uh underneath the front porch and going into the basement that uh, uh probably an eight foot wide section that washed out okay questions no. Questions? Okay, at this time I'll entertain a motion. I move that we set the date of January 24th, 2019 for a public hearing to consider condemnation of the structures located at 417 South 6th Street. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Item G, consider a citizen request to remove 606 Fountain from the list to bid for demolition. Yeah, previously, this was approved to, to go out for demolition. <laughs> Shortly after that, I think the next day, this property was bought at the tax sale. And then we were, uh, uh, we contacted and, and was subsequently contacted by the new owner. The new owner has plans to uh, rehabilitate the property, and I believe that he is here tonight and wishes to, to speak to the commissioners. Okay. Is the owner? Hi, <clears throat> my name is Paul Horvath. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak with you. And uh, I'm from Lawrence, Kansas, and, and I do want to commend uh, the city of Independence. My first impression of this city is very positive. Um, I bought a number of properties at the tax sale and I really didn't know much about Independence when I bought the properties. I was more familiar with Coffeeville and that's what drew me to the sale. So I see that the city, I see a forward momentum to try to clean up the city. I could see that happening. I met Lisa uh, from the Chamber of Commerce and I see a lot of positive energy going to the city. And I understand that you want to clean up the town, get rid of unsightly buildings, <laughs> dangerous buildings, and, and I think that's uh, a necessity and a good idea. This particular property, I think, is worth rehabilitating. Um, it sits on a foundation. It's got a little bit of a, a slant on one of the walls, but it's not as substantial. So I think structurally it's sound. The roof does need repair, which is allowing water leakage in the rear of the building. The front is still in pretty good condition. It's got nice oak floors, a built-in fireplace. I mean, there's some characteristics in there that make it an appealing property. So uh, rather than remove it from the list for demolition, maybe if we could have a two-month stay or something to give me some time to get the, to make a, Initial improvements on the property to show the city that uh, I'll, I'll follow through on cleaning up the structure. I think what immediately needs to happen is it's an eyesore. The yard needs to be cleaned up. The roof should be repaired so that there's no more damage. So rather than take it off the list, maybe just a deferral or I don't know what's the best way to handle it. You know, and keep it on the tax rolls. You, you demolish the property, it costs the money to demolish it it's off the tax roll it's not producing that revenue so however on the flip side of that it often hurts the value of all the surrounding properties so sometimes by demolishing a house it improves the tax revenue and, so. and i would agree with that at times i think in this particular case you know I've, I've looked at some of the properties in the area and i don't think that's the case here i think this property would be an asset that remodeled i think would bring up the property values I, I am thrilled that you're interested in working on any properties in Independence. However, I'm a little bit jaded, I, I admit, right up front, because we've been through this many times in the past, and generally we end up demolishing it anyway. If we've gotten this far along and somebody comes along and says, no, I think I can save it, and then a year later we end up demolishing it. Right. And so um, I, I, I just hate to see you put a lot of time and money into it, and then we end up demolishing it anyway. Have, have you done this a lot? 
I mean, have you done a lot of properties like this? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Can you give me a little bit of background? I mean, yes. Five, Cer six, ten. Certainly. Uh, I can give you more background than maybe you want, but uh, I've, been, I've been in... I'll cut you off if I need to. Okay, okay. I, I've been in the business approximately... This is my 40th uh, continuous year as a landlord in Lawrence. I bought and sold a number of properties there, remodeled, sold, so I rent, renovate, uh, trade, buy, sell. I mean, it's what I do. Have you tackled anything this bad before? Yes. Okay. Yes, for sure. Okay. And, and I've done it enough to know, you know, if I didn't think the property was worth saving, I wouldn't waste my time, you know, because I understand what you're saying. I bought a number of properties in town, and ironically, this is one of the better ones because it sits on a full foundation, and the foundation is solid, you know, so you got something to work with there. Right. Structurally, it's a sound building. And... Um, so I, I understand your concern. And this is a very different market than Lawrence. I love Lawrence, but... Uh, I understand that, but yeah. you know, I was buying properties in Lawrence in the 1980s for $10,000. You know, so that's yeah. where Lawrence was 30 right. years ago, and I think independence maybe now is... I mean, I can see you guys have a lot of positive energy, and the fact <laughs> that you're wanting another town to come in to assess you. I mean, that speaks well of you, that you're not afraid of feedback, you're not afraid to be seen, you wanna make improvements. Uh, so I'd like to think that, that this is a curve that's on the way up, kind of like Lawrence was 30 years ago. Yeah. I, I like to think that too. And, and like I said, I'm, and I'm thrilled that you're interested in doing some properties here. Here's, here's another issue. I have, I have four sons that are grown. Uh, three of them happen to live in Southern California right now. And I'm kind of baiting them back to Kansas <laughs> by saying, look, I'll give you guys a house. Yeah, there you go. Needs a little work. but And, and <laughs> a couple of them are very, are very capable. They've done this with me. So, uh, you know, it's a, you know. So do, they, do they have kids? No. Okay, well, darn. I mean, I, if, they, if there were grandkids involved, then it'd be worth any prize. I right? have a daughter. She's got the kids. <laughs> okay, <but> good. <laughs> my boys are a little slow. Yeah, I'd mine too. Regard. Yeah. <laughs> But I, I appreciate your concern, and I guess I'm not going to uh, maybe not take it off the demolition list, give it a stay for 60 days and reassess it. Is that, would that be a fair? Well, it's on the list to submit for demolition, but what's the schedule to send that list out to bid? Well, we have some, in the December meeting, we're going to have some other properties that we want to add to the bid list. So... Uh, the list is there. Mm -hmm. The suggestion is to mark the property, go ahead, leave it where it is. But before the list is mailed and finalized for bidding, because that will come back to the commission for approval, that will allow you time to uh, evaluate and you know, if you go in and clean the lot up, secure the house, you're showing us you're serious, you're working on it, then we can remove it from the list at that time. Because you're right, that house will bring more tax revenue for us finished than the empty lot. And, uh, you know, if you're willing to invest the time and the money, then, uh, you know, I think, we could work with you uh, and we could stay it from going out to bid at that time and we're we're looking at December the list probably won't go out until at the actual bids till probably January probably February. by time with the holidays by the time the bid package got put together to, to send out it would probably be January yes so would January give you time to yes yes I could make definite progress and you can see, you can assess. I do have one comment. Uh, one of the, the neighbors has expressed concern about that big tree, yes, the proximity to the house. If we were going to take care of the lot, we would be happy to see something be done with that tree and alleviate concerns that the neighbors have with the condition of that tree. It's a rather large tree and uh, concerned about yeah, I can, the condition of the tree. Right, right, right before I came over here, I talked with that neighbor. That's... Um, I have her name and number here. Um, 
And uh, she she did express that the city w would take down the tree. As part of the demolition process, that tree would be removed. Yes. And but she, I talked with her and I told her I was coming here. She expressed concern about the tree, but she said she'd be willing to work with me to maybe share the cost and trimming up the tree to make it safe to ensure that it wasn't going to fall on her property. So she didn't have, uh, she didn't express any objections to me to renovate the property. I think her most was concerned that something be done. Well, and, and I think those details really aren't the commission's right. to decide about trimming a tree. I think that's something you guys can work out. If the tree's not dead, uh, you know, I think trimming and, you know, we, we want to maintain, I mean, how would we look at our tree board in the face if we want to remove a, a, a majestic live tree now sculpturally trimming tastefully trimming okay they they might go for that but you know, i think i think some of those things is don and you can right. can work out and make progress and then we could take it off at the list before it goes to bid but that would give you some time to work with Don to make some improvements and yeah that seems like a good compromise to yeah. me I don't want to take it off the list <clears throat> right. but I'm happy to see I what mean, we can do in a month yeah, or two I mean two, like you say we wouldn't we wouldn't be bringing uh, the bids to you until January meeting mm -hmm. so that okay. that gives us that gives us almost two months to to see what to see how that moves forward that'd be great how many did you buy in Independence? Just the one? Uh, between uh, Independence and Coffeeville, there was about 130 properties. Mo yeah. Most of which are vacant lots. Gotcha. Okay. But some yeah. with houses. About, I think, eight houses in Independence. Well, any others condemned that we'll be meet, we'll be uh, meeting with think, you regularly? I don't think I, I met with Don. I don't think there's any. Uh, that was the only one we found. Okay. And ironically, I, I think it's probably the, uh, and maybe I shouldn't tell you this, but probably the most structurally sound. Yeah, you probably shouldn't tell him that. It's probably. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, great. I'm excited. I'm going to come take pictures tomorrow and then take pictures in a few weeks. Okay. okay. Well, we've already done some cleanup. I mean, just a minor amount. I didn't want to do too much until I uh, got a sure. feedback. Sure. Uh, we appreciate your efforts. Well, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, good, good luck. It, it would yeah. be nice to see the house sure rehabbed. And you, you can get an idea of how much money you're going to have to sink in this to, to, to bring it back up to livable standards. And maybe by the time we, we come back here, or you come back before us, you'll have a good idea of right. where you sit, whether that's still economically feasible for you to sure to continue on with the project or, or back away from right. it. Right. Oh, I appreciate yeah. that. And let us know if you need any help recruiting one of your sons to independence. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. that. <laughs> Thank you. All righty. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so action on item G, we'll just table. Uh, I don't know we need okay. to take any action. No. Okay. Item H. Considering authorizing the property at 721 South 18th to be removed by the city's public works department. Yeah, we've talked to uh, Mike, and he's willing to uh, uh, push that building in for us and do that. Uh, we've tried to contact the owners. We've sent letters. I've gone on the website, tried to contact them, called the numbers for them in Kansas City. There is no response to our letters or to the... Uh, the number says it's disconnected. I've tried to go on the internet and research and uh, it says that it's in Kansas City, but no response. And but that building is in advanced state of uh, decline. And Why would we do it with city personnel rather than bid it out? Uh, it, it's something that we could easily do. There's no other structures around it or anything We're like else. Money. Yeah, save us a little bit of money to okay. do it that way. Okay. Now, Refresh our memory. We have condemned it. Yes, it has gone through all the paperwork. Mm -hmm. So, by that, we could issue, uh, release it for bids. Correct. Yes, we could. Okay, so we don't need to do an emergency. No action. That's already so. No. Okay. 
this is just a cost saving me <clears throat> measure. I mean, you know, we have, there's enough area around it. We right. can get our equipment without having to worry about affecting any other yeah. structures or anything around it. I thought okay. this one was already gone. Yeah. I think it's been a long time since we talked about yeah. it. Any other questions about the property? No. Do I ask a question? Yes. Is that an old nightclub? Yes. yes. Galaxy Club. The, the Galaxy, that's mm -hmm. what I thought. And maybe yeah, memories. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to share? No. <laughs> Not even one? No. I, I think you remember. said enough. I don't remember them. <laughs> yeah. You said enough. <laughs> okay, if there's no more questions, I'll entertain a motion. I move to authorize staff to conduct asbestos testing and abatement and for Public Work Street crews to remove the structure and clear the lot at 721 South 18th Street. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> motion carried. Next item, consider ADA accessibility and parking complaint at Park Boulevard Baseball Fields. Leonard, uh, Mayor, as you informed me about a month ago, I think you'd received the claim. Uh, uh, we immediately went and visited with Brent, and uh, he gave his apologies, but their board had received multiple complaints, several visits, and are, we're getting weekly phone calls. Uh, one of the complaints involves a uh, coach that is wheelchair bound, who is trying to uh, coach his son at the Clark James Field. Uh, what you have in front of you tonight, uh, we put something together and Sean is here and he also uh, Mike to ans answer any financial questions you may have, but it's a preliminary, it's not exact. There's still some more accessible routes that would need to be put in to get to the bathroom. We just put something together so that we could open the discussion. I know you had concerns, you had voiced something about, is it worth putting money in there, going somewhere else? Uh, opening up those discussions, I did find in Hayes, which I put in the RCA, where they had built some new ball fields and the cost of those ball fields. I didn't even put in all the costs because they went with artificial turf. I mean, it, it was well over a million dollars. I just tried to show you what their dirt work and fences, lighting, scoreboards was. What I'm asking the commission tonight, if you decide to go this route, is to let us begin a phase one down there so that we can accommodate this gentleman in his wheelchair. Uh, I'll let Sean speak to it, but I think Sean and I need to visit with the rec board if you give us that direction. Help us develop, we'll develop some phases and a phase one uh, for future projects and uh, start working on this down there to help alleviate this. Uh, some of the other complaints, there's what's called buddy ball and I received multiple. They couldn't get wheelchairs into Sinclair Field. They're having all sorts of issues. So I will turn this over to Sean because he's kind of well, been helping me with this and any questions you may have. Mary. Yeah, it, I guess with both of you, what, I think the first step is to do a, an audit of the facility to identify the deficiencies and what we did with uh, state facilities at Osawatomie and, and Parsons State Hospital and some schools. We took the site plan and we identified the areas of, of parking, where the routes need to be, what all needs to be done, and you check off the, the areas of noncompliance. Where we don't know where we're gonna end up now, we're piecing we're kind of going uh, in a direction, I think, that we can get more money in it. Again, in, in my costs, there's so many problems down there when you start looking at the total. At what point would it be better to look at another facility? One of the things that was brought up in our uh, recommendation on on parking modifications of gravel lots was ADA gravel parking you know I was surprised to see that as acceptable for ADA well why can't we do some quick fix to address the terms of getting a gravel ADA parking area gravel routes 
And, you know, if Clark James Field is the one that you have now that needs to be accessible, modify one dugout instead of doing the whole field. Since it was all constructed prior to 91, we don't have to make the whole field. We have to provide the whole complex totally. We look at, you know, ADA parking and access to the fields for spectators, particularly if you have one coach, then a dugout and some things like that. Um, instead of going in and, and spending a lot of money up front with paved parking lots, you know, we need to get in, in writing all the deficiencies so we can look at the, the whole picture. I do have that. That's in our transition, and Sean and I are working on that. We're bringing that to you in probably late January for the city. We do have an assessment. Then that's yeah. why I think we need to look at addressing the term now and not authorize money to do everything until we know all those, you know, because when I look at, at an audit, you identify starting at the parking, the route, the concession stand, the restroom, the bleachers, the dugouts, and, and you know exactly what everything is all at one time, and then we can evaluate how much money to put to the area. But, you know, if, if a, a gravel parking area can be ADA accessible, that could come in and, and address the current complaints maybe quickly without us putting the money out to go into uh, paved parking areas and, and paved sidewalks. Because, you know, even with this facility on the concession stand, if you set a table up outside and the worker can go out and service somebody that's disabled, you don't have to modify the building. Correct. And there's a lot of things that, you know, if we had the audit and then evaluate recommendations so we can come back and spend our money wiser. So would you like us to kind of, <clears throat> with that audit, Sean and I work with the rec board and come back when we bring the transition plan to you in January? Yeah. And with, uh, I'm thinking, well, it'll be January, February, we're back with it. And what we had was was a, a binder yeah and then you've identified each place so in the future you're you've addressed one issue that you can come back and see futures and you know you're evaluating and rating mm -hmm. uh, you know the one we did for the judicial center and courthouse we actually photographed and yeah. it was more more elaborate but we cited we cited the the references in the in the ADA so yeah. that in the future if you don't do it all now you've got a source to come back that's exactly how this is later going. on we have pictures we have the siding and it's references to the but, yeah and I think you know this kind of goes over into the next item too that you know we're we're way behind and in, in 92 we should have had these audits completed mm -hmm. in binder form that we're progressing towards uh, satisfying the complaints and you know for us to talk you know it's hard for us to visualize what you're seeing if we have the the completed report then we can all know exactly where we're going and look at the big picture of how much money totally this is going to require and it makes uh, Longevity, like when we did it in 92, we've gone through two state architects but the, and multiple directors of maintenance, but the volumes are still there able to use. And the same thing will happen here, that is staff changes, that it goes on and creates a plan. And uh, the rec commission, it, we got, kind of got a strange relationship with us owning, them managing, that we can get some directions of, of what is going to be best in the end. Yeah, I agree. Yep. So. Yeah, that's exactly the route we're <laughs> headed. In fact, we have a meeting next week. Uh, Sean and Sean and 
uh, I, we've done the assessments. They're helping me put together prices and different parts of the design to put it all together. It's a huge binder. So um, it's a big project. Because you, you, you can identify the specific areas that you're going to address the needs. You've got the workers and the coaches and the spectators and, and some consolidation and, uh, you know, like the lower ball field. If you have parking, do you really need to interconnect the two with accessible routes? You, you could look at a simpler route to the concession stand, to the restrooms. Maybe you use uh, portable restrooms to accommodate some, you know, I mean, look at the, look how long these fields are in use. So can we justify the cost to renovate those restrooms there? So, you yeah, know, just there's a lot that will help us yeah. make decisions. Okay. Yeah, we can break it down, uh, these concepts into, I guess, the best case scenario and then uh, have some different options on the mm -hmm. larger ones like this for mm -hmm. the commission to examine. And yeah. that's, that's exactly the path David has directed us down. So we can finish putting that together. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are we under a, are we under a timeline as far as rectifying these complaints? Well, you have a complaint with the coach. You can make that compliant. His parking, his yeah. access, a dugout for him. Uh, you know, there's there's minimal that can be done to accommodate. Exactly. That's what it says. Accommodate. Right. Exactly. And it it brings in. The ADA stresses that it, it doesn't have to, it cannot be financially burdensome Correct. to the owner, too. So, you know, there's there's some give and take both sides. Okay. So, like Clark James Field, you could designate one dugout as accessible, one bleacher area to have accessible seating, and you've, you've made an effort to accommodate in mm -hmm. because you're not redoing... <coughs> If you renovate the whole complex, now that goes somewhere else. But yeah. for an existing complex, yep, it it narrows it down considerably. Yeah, and I agree. Uh, to answer Lewis, I think Commissioner Lewis, as long as we get something by summer to address him, we'll be fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. So and see, and we that, got plenty of time. And that with the the gravel yep. and the screenings. Yeah. The screen, he's compacting it. Yeah, that can be brought in with our own. We don't even need to go to bid. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And we'll definitely work with Sean on all that. And, uh, and, and the point is, when you do that, is you're making an effort. Right. You've made an immediate effort to satisfy a need, which brings back some of the litigation exactly. that could come. You're correct. Okay. Okay. Uh, next item, item J, consider city facilities, conditions, and accessible issues. My thought is the same, same there, because when you're dealing with employees, it even narrows the scope. Existing buildings, you got job descriptions that prov provide minimum standards, and in some cases, it eliminates wheelchair accessibility Correct. because of the tasks involved at some of the buildings. This HVAC, is, I didn't understand. Let me, let me do a little preamble and I'll turn it over to... This did not start out as an ADA audit. Mm -hmm. uh, a few months ago, uh, just knowing the condition of the facilities mm -hmm. at sanitation, utilities, and streets, uh, I felt, which were considerably substandard and, and not good working conditions for those employees. So I asked a consultant to look at that uh, and uh, took a pretty detailed look and came back with a list of improvements uh, at the time not looking whether they were ADA or not. Mm -hmm. uh, turns out a lot of them were ADA and that's kind of how it, it, it segued into as part of the ADA discussion. We were able to, if we needed to do some upgrades, we could tap into the ADA funds. Mm -hmm. 
But it started out as just trying to improve the conditions mm -hmm. for the employees. And that's why you saw ABC, HVAC and, and some other things. And this isn't the total list by any stretch mm -hmm. of the imagination. Got quite a long list, but these were some of the examples that uh, ADA may, may assist in. But that's, so it did fall in segue in, into the ADA. And when right. we talked with Dave about the, we've got this list, what can be funded through ADA? Mm -hmm. to pick and Leonard, it's been a st struggle. I mean, I have spent a lot of time on the phone with the DOJ, and you're right. When you're talking buildings before 92, older, and all this, of just trying to get the answer, and, you know, there's no, as you said, there's no easy answer to this. The biggest thing, you know, we want to take care of our employees. We're a Title II, and we have to accommodate the employees. So mm -hmm. if an employee is injured like duty, that's where some of these things come into. Uh, as you well know, the water plant treatment, renovation, you have no leeway. You have to do, if you're doing a renovation of a facility, you have to comply with ADA. That's cut and dry. So what we're looking here is just making these bathrooms accessible, making the entrances, being able to get in, some proper lighting, and then, as Craig said, taking care of our employees. These sanitation guys, work on the back of the truck mm -hmm. every day. They're hot, they're tired. I mean, taking care of them a little bit, mm -hmm. providing them a place to break, street utilities. So that's kind of where this is at mm -hmm. uh, and where we're at with the ADA and uh, just trying to do some of this work. Uh, sanitation and utilities yeah. have some enterprise funds. There's some money there that can be accessed. It's not general fund taxpayer. And I took it where it says the city is currently doing ADA audits of all city properties and buildings. So yeah, that's where I'm that's saying, back to the yeah. If you're going to do a, an audit and look at ADA improvements, then we need to look right. at the audit all at once. Yeah, we'll bring that to you, and you guys can help us it all. develop yeah. what you see as your priorities. <laughs> and right. from that, then we can move forward and start planning year to year yeah you know 2022 the ADA that sales tax there has to be consideration is that going to be prolonged you know there's a lot of parts of town we haven't even assessed ADA ramps I got several calls in the last month I was telling Craig in the northeast part of town they said when are you going to come put our ADA ramps in you have not even been in our neighborhoods but and the Department of Justice said that and they will only require them on a street right. that we yeah. milled and overlay. Yeah. And and just because this there, one was in a wheelchair. So I mean there's some that's that's, yeah. that's different. Yeah. They need routes right. in and out. Yeah. yeah. But to go blanket the whole Yeah, yeah. and I town, you are exactly correct. I agree. not with what you. we need to do. I agree with you there. So so you know but, and that that comes back to an audit that we can work from to see right. where these go in a reasonable and you know those manner. are discussions we need how do you go into those neighborhoods <clears throat> and know who's disabled or not when you're checking those corners and that and you know i take these complaints and i put i know who they are and where they're at so that i can tell you guys you know this neighbor, this guy needs a ramp but it makes it <laughs> as you try to plan that out yeah and then we're, when you put the ramp in about the route from the ramp to where now you right. open up a whole nother it's it's mind-boggling some days it's nice sometimes we we can't do everything we told right. uh, an individual on north eight that sycamore he asked for a ramp and we told him no he couldn't have one mm -hmm. yeah so that's why you guys get paid the big bucks that's right that's, <laughs> that's right. exactly so yeah that's we will right. work hard to get all this to you no, and you know, in the in the plan, it it helps identify where we're going because we're looking at a lot of money, and yes. it's getting more critical on how we use our money. I, yes, and like I, you said, with the renewal, now's the time we need to look at mm -hmm. what's going to be in in yeah. uh, 2021 when that sunsets. Yes. How we're going to go go forward? Go forward. Yeah. yeah. You're exactly okay. right. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Dave. Okay. Next item, consider designating the 1600 and 1700 blocks of Halsey Avenue, a no parking zone, 
and that a 20 mile an hour zone be established on Sinclair Drive between 10th and 13th Streets and on Halsey between Landon Drive and Willow Street. So uh, when I was discussing this earlier today, um, one of the things that I brought up in the meeting was that we don't want to we don't want to chase a dot. We don't want to look at one problem in an area and just address that one problem. We found that whenever we addressed some traffic issues over to the east of the high school, as you recall, uh, we addressed it one problem at one place, and it and the problem continued in that area. So since we've made that adjustment, uh, we've not had any crashes in that area or no certainly no injury or serious crashes like we were having in that area so uh, we got a request from a few citizens on this uh, I was actually surprised we had three or four requests come rolling in and you'd have to look there at the at the resources or the sources there that I provided you but we had a number of requests come in to different officers about this area we uh, the school resource officer and I looked at it came up with a couple of suggestions sent it to the superintendent uh, the superintendent's folks said that wasn't going to work. We went and met with the school. We started kicking some ideas around, and it, it got out of hand real fast. So the, what you're seeing before you is not what the police department came up with. This is what the traffic safety committee came up with. They held a meeting with the citizens at the school, included the school. So we brought all the stakeholders we could get together on this. This is, not, this is, a, this is the citizen's voice that you're seeing, not mine or or Tim's or or our school resource officer this is the citizens desire um, in the process uh, got a, a, a spoke on the phone call with uh, or spoke on the phone with Amber Rodriguez she's with me tonight I I asked her I, I told her it was imperative that she be here tonight so fortunately she was patient and and she's outlasted us all and uh, so I'm, I'm glad that she's really here because what we did not know what, what didn't come out in the stakeholder meeting she couldn't make the meeting and uh, we understand that so what came out this week is another thing we need to consider before we proceed with this plan she has a conditional use permit for a daycare at 1601 Halsey which I believe is the very final house there at Halsey and Willow on the south or on the, the north west corner there of Halsey and Willow uh, that's a daycare she has some things that I think are important to bring up before we proceed with this plan and then I've kind of been brainstorming some solutions maybe we can talk about that so I'll turn it over to her oh, lucky. Uh, <laughs> all I really want is a loading un loading unloading sign instead of a no parking because I do have parents you know that four or five o'clock time that I have more than one show up and so if we do a no parking then I'm not compliant with my conditional use permit and then somebody saying well you're not you you're not you know providing the um, loading and unloading there so that's really just what I want <laughs> well, what time do you need the loading and loading all the time or I am perfectly fine with as long as I have the daycare there which who knows how long that is um, that that sign is there and when well, I, I mean, leave during time the day, of day though, or? is it all day long? Not really. I have a drop off at quarter to six, quarter to seven, seven thirty to seven forty five, which I know is that very important time of this kids getting dropped off. And then again later, anywhere from four to five thirty. Well, whoops. So I mean, we part, can even make it. I've had grandkids there. I know what you're talking about in that neighborhood. <laughs> it's it's congested. It it's is really bad. But if if you need it after the traffic is gone from school, mm. then what about restricting parking from certain hours uh, in that block? I, I think that's a good idea I, and until you just said that I've forgotten that when you go to bigger cities you'll see time frames put on those parking restrictions the other thought that I had in talking with her is the times that she's having people dropped mm -hmm. off don't sound like they're really going to overlap into the school time she's talking the, the, the only one that's close is 745 and it's a brief time frame I'm curious 
I wonder if we could experiment with just putting that loading unloading parking you know, loading unloading space at her facility test that because if they're coming before and after the school rush which is what it sounds like to me in our conversations I don't know that that loading or unloading issue would be a problem for the school traffic the other issue that would and your suggestion would just clean it up entirely by saying no parking during these time frames yeah. I, either one I mean there's a million solutions here when you look at it we could eliminate we could allow parking on the west side of the street I mean, we could do a lot of different things so but I, I think either your suggestion or her suggestion of the loading and unloading zone is what I would I think would yeah. accommodate everybody in the room I think the the time in, in the morning the congestion I've seen and experienced is afternoon mm -hmm. morning it, it's very sporadic if you come down from the north from Willow it's down in that area but it's really dispersed towards the bottom but when school lets out at night that whole area Landon Halsey um, I found that it was really easy to go on to Willow to go north until I realized I was going the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't recently, but yeah, you know, I I think uh, that window that we needed open and the window she needs, you know, the the loading zone could maybe. Well, why does she get that? That's a good point. And and yeah we need to control parking for visibility and circulation those roads are really really narrow and so that would be a thought to, to accommodate you know if you did that one block or uh, that's up to you to decide how it would work best chief but I, I think that <clears throat> I think we just take the 1600 block of Halsey and make that no parking from say 2:30 to to 4 or 2:30 to 3:30 cuz that's the other issue is when you know school traffic is tremendous congestion but it's for really not very long mm -hmm. and um particularly in the afternoon like you were saying you know in in the early mm -hmm. in the early time of the day when the morning when you're dropping kids off it's more sporadic because I have a different start of work time than you know you guys might you know so if we're dropping children off we're not going to be there just all at once but when the day ends that's the cut i mean that's a that's a bright line and everybody's moving so i think that we just say 2 30 to 3 30 i suspect would probably be a good uh time frame to restrict that parking would that accommodate your needs yeah i mean and isn't it on park street where they where it's like no parking from or school zone from certain times I on right. park boulevard yeah down by the ballparks we've got no parking during <laughs> games when the lights are flashing mm -hmm. but yeah there's other I areas so. that but i mean yeah you know even if we did that like no you know no parking from eight to four you know that whatever you know mm. i'm flexible i'm not trying to be a no Pain. <laughs> now there is an issue that <laughs> needs to be addressed. Because somebody's going to say, "Well, you're not," you know, because that would be my lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, would you want if if you approve that parking restriction? Would you want all that parking restriction to be consistent so that you don't have someone else coming along and saying, "Well, why'd you do it on that block and not my block?" Okay. Yeah. So make would, it as easy as possible for you to enforce. So, it sounds to me like then. 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. parking restriction on the 16 and 1700 block could be the modification to the motion there, the suggested motion in the RCA. We just add in no parking from 8 to 4 p.m. On the 16 and 1700 block of Halsey. Yeah, if you look at, if you just go down to no parking zone and put your carrot there and put 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. And that would that would let this that would slide that that would take this plan and pretty well move it through unchanged if if that's the direction that you think we need to go what do you think I think it's worth a try you know it's, it's not a it's huge financial yeah. investment if it doesn't work out right so do I that it accommodates her uh, 
and like I said, the, the school traffic is dispersed by that time. Now, will there be no parking only when school's in session, or will this be year-round? Do they make a sign like that, Mike? Yeah. That'd be a pretty big sign. <laughs> I suppose we can do whatever we want. I've uh, seen them uh, before, I, I think, in session. It's days. just a small school, school days. days. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we could put on school days. School if, days. You know, it's, it's up to you. Um, we're going to be bringing another project to you soon involving school zone, and we're going to ch change the signs to specifically say on school days. So yeah. that's... That's consistent with other traffic controls. Because if you live there and in the summer and you can't park on your street and there's no school, that's, yeah. you know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the one way right in front of Eisenhower, just a one way during the school year? I believe. No, no, I don't no, believe not so. Anymore. No, not okay. anymore. Okay. okay, any other questions? We're ready for a motion. Yeah. Do I have a motion? Uh, okay. I move that we designate the 1600 and 1700 blocks of Halsey Avenue a no parking zone from 8 to 4 p.m. while school's in session and that a 20 mile per hour zone be established on Sinclair Drive between 10th and 13th Streets and on Halsey between Landon Drive and Willow Street. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Item L, consider extending the school zone south on 10th Street so the Riley School students are protected in the school zone. So did you read your homework assignment that I gave you with that? Yes. <laughs> that was pretty lengthy. Um, the reason I'd like to break it, well, first of all, this uh, we had a, a request, I believe it was the superintendent asked me to add to that school zone uh, at the Riley School. And when I went out and looked at it, I realized that, you know, we got, we're chasing a dot here. We need to look at this whole big picture because there's some issues here or there are some issues here. So doing the research, I talked with Mike Passour and found out that the signs that we have in place right now in the existing school zone are not uh, to current standard. It doesn't mean we can't use them. It just means it's not a best practice anymore. And uh, those things do change. And then uh, so doing some other research, the length of the school zone, as you can see there, if we keep that school zone long, the deviation from the speed limit is just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. I wish I could make the school zone shorter, uh, the second or the south, the south zone, I wish I could make it shorter, but we just can't. You know, you've got a long stretch of road in front of the high school and then you've got the Riley School there, so that one's gonna have to be long. But the other one up at Spruce and, and 10th, we can shrink that one down and make it a reasonable length. And I think, you know, according to the research, we'll have better compliance with the speed through there and that'll be safer for our pedestrians. Uh, so, and it brings it up to current standard by doing it this way. The other issue is it's really important to me from a police officer's perspective. You don't want to give anybody an out in court. If we cite you for speeding in a school zone, we need to have it set pretty tight so that you, don't, you can't beat that ticket because we don't want people to be able to speed with impunity in a school zone. And what this does is make it very clear where the school zones stop and start. It doesn't leave anything to chance. And that's how it's done down south. Uh, it's, close, it's done very close to this down south at the uh, middle school. So this does a lot of things. Brings us up to standard, cleans it up, makes it, it communicates to the traffic very clearly what needs to be happening. And then it reduces the length of the school zone as best we can. What is there a a two-block gap between the two school zones? There is a, there is a bit of a gap. Uh, the gap would run, on this suggestion, the gap would run from uh, Hackberry down to, I think, or 
down to Willow, I think, right, or just north of Willow. Uh, so you can see the, the, the southern school zone starts just a couple houses north of Willow, and the northern school zone ends there at Hackberry. I'm not, uh, I didn't put that map together to show the exact distance, but it's not a very, there's not a big gap between them, no. I'd have to look on Google real quick to see yeah, exactly what that is. It's a little is. farther than what I thought. But there's the Green Acres development and the apartments are there. Okay. Yeah. It was, it's kind of now confusing around the high school because currently that's not a school zone, is it? It, it, it well, kind of. <laughs> Yeah. Because you, as you're traveling north, you're going to go past. Um, you're going to go past Riley School with no reduced speed limit, no protection for pedestrians there. You're going to hit Oak, and then you're going to continue north on Tenth, and you're not going to have any protection for pedestrians as far as the school zone is concerned mm -hmm. until you get up to um, almost past the high school there. I mean, it's a pretty good well up into the parking lot of the high school there. So you're two-thirds of the way through the area that you need before the northbound traffic's even in the school zone. Mm -hmm. And that's a 35-mile-an-hour zone yeah. at that. And, you know, you look at the statistics there, 20-mile-an-hour yeah. um, pedestrian, 20-mile-an-hour and under pedestrian impact, it's like a 4%, you know, 4 out of every 100 are killed. But when you go up to 35, you're looking at, uh, what is it, 4 out of every 10 are killed, I think. If I remember the numbers right, you'd have to check me on there you have that in front of you but that's a huge mm -hmm. difference mm -hmm. and to me that justifies making some change I drive up 10th Street two or three times a week and it always feels like I should be slowing down but there's nothing telling me that I need to there I think I probably get cussed every morning because I'm certainly not going to be uh, get a complaint from someone because they believed that I was speeding through a, a school yeah. zone you know where so, does yeah. it uh, school zone or does it even extend on to Oak Street uh, East Oak from 10th Street going east from 10th yeah. you know I, I don't know I'd have to go look at it I'm not recalling anything specific there on Oak going east of 10th but I'd have to go look at that to give you a straight answer I believe it does go west on Oak but I'm not yeah I don't remember what it does on East Oak because if you're going west on Oak east of 10th you can enter the school zone and not have any notification that you're entering it yeah. if it's not yeah, that's, noticed. That's a good point too. So maybe we could put an extra mm -hmm. sign in yeah. there at Oak and 10th. Yeah, it looks like a a good plan. What you what you've I, got? I think the reason that you know there may not be a school zone on the going east and may not. I, I I wish I knew. I wished I would have paid attention to that when I was making this plan, but. The reason is that maybe if it's not there is because there is a four-way stop, so you're bringing traffic to the mm -hmm. pretty slow end of that area anyways on Oak. Questions? No, I've had, I had a chance to look at this in the Halsey earlier today. I would like to ask if you're planning to shave on December 1st. <laughs> No, you're not. Can, can I get a photo? I'm not, I'm not going to put an expiration date on it. I mean, <laughs> I have no other question. I've gotten some job offers for some Santa Claus positions. <laughs> kind of hurt my feelings. If there's no other questions, then I'll entertain a motion. I can read it. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Sorry, I had to find where I was at. I move that we authorize the following. The removal of outdated electric signs located near 1922 North 10th and 1424 North 10th. The school zone be established from 1922 North 10th south to Hackberry and 10th with signs indicating where the zone ends, as well as signs indicating the speed and hours the zone is in effect. 
Yeah, I have a motion. Do I have a second? There's actually a third bullet point there. No, they need to turn the page, Commissioner you, Susie. There's yeah, a third point, bullet this. point on the last page. I got it. A school zone be established okay. from 1616 North 10th south to Hickory and 10th with signs indicating where the zone ends as well as signs indicating okay. the speed and hours the zone is in effect. So we both made the motion. Okay. <laughs> but I second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you, Gary. Those. My pleasure. Motion carried. It's good teamwork, gentlemen. <laughs> Next you. item on the Thanks, agenda is reports. We have uh, city minutes from the tree board, planning and zoning, board of appeals. Any questions regarding those minutes? If not, we'll go to city manager's comments. I have no comments, Mayor. <clears throat> uh, commissioner's comments. I would like to ask a question. This uh, conversation made me think about it. Didn't we change the speed limit in front of City Hall to get rid of the 20 mile an hour speed limit there? I remember voting on that. But there. Oh, yeah. Temporary yeah. City Hall? Yeah. yeah. You're referring yeah, to the. Yeah. Cross, we were the referring wall. to Locust from 10th down. We did. We changed it from 10th to. Uh, is it 14th or 15th that runs on the east side of the We're building. talking about. Temporary City Hall, the current Yes, sir. Home. Yes, sir. We changed that to a 30 mile an hour zone. The exception is that the block that Temporary City Hall sits on and the doctor's office sits on. Oh, that's still that's 20. a 20 oh, okay. because we have so much because you have uh, yeah. you know state and city workers walking across the street okay. and then you have patients walking across the street. Okay, thank you. I kept thinking those 20 mile an hour signs were going to go away, but they did so except for that block. Right. right. Okay. Thank you. But other than that, that Laurel is 30. Okay. from 10th all the way out to Maine. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I don't have anything else. I don't have anything okay. today. I don't have anything. Uh, public concerns, do we get any requests? Okay. Uh, next item on the agenda is uh, executive session. I make a motion that we Recess for executive session for the discussion of employees' performance pursuant to non-elected personnel exemption KSA 75-4319B1. Um, meeting will resume. Uh, do we want to do 20 minutes? Uh, do we want to do two first with the commissioners and then join with the city manager? To Either way is fine with me. Okay, we'll resume at eight, uh, 10 after 8, uh, and it will be the commissioners first, and then we'll come back in session and go again. Okay. <clears throat> the commission is back in session, and from executive session, no, no action will be taken tonight. With that, we're at adjournment. Uh, do I have a motion for adjournment? Make a motion that we adjourn. Second. And we have a motion and a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carried.